Well, after an unexpected pause in the programming, I'm very happy to be back with block number two of Behind the Blocks. So yes, there was an unexpected break in proceedings for this season. I unfortunately got an eye infection that caused my eyes to puff up and swell and turn red. And then I had great difficulties looking at computer screens. Uh, it was causing migraines and problems like that. So unfortunately, I was not able to work for very long. So sadly, this video has been pushed back and pushed back until I have been in a position where I could actually sew. So enough of that. I'm just glad to be back. And I'm glad to have the second block, which is the Jacob's Ladder in this series. Now, this is a really fun block. I first learned to make this block many years ago from a Missouri Star quilt video where she, Jenny, made the quilt in red and white and I just loved the block. When I was designing this quilt, it was a must for me to include in it. So what you start to see in these blocks is that we start to build on skills from other videos. So you may recognize the good old four patch and that's from behind the block season one, the very first video actually, the four patch. And then you recognize our half square triangle unit here from the previous video to this block number one of season two of Behind the Blocks. So you can see how these two blocks come together and they make this lovely block. So, I mean, it's literally, it's made up of these two blocks and that's it, that's all you need to do. So if you've watched both those videos, you already have all the skills that you need to make this block. Now, color wise, I have got kept the simple two colors with my background. Uh, you can go mad if you like. I love using solids, which is why we've gone with the solids, but you can pick any colors that you like. Just a quick little tip, when you're getting everything that you need from your cutting instructions, if you are not confident with your half square triangles, I would suggest that you add an extra half an inch to your cut squares, and that will give you extra fabric for trimming. If you're quite confident with half square triangles, then this just gives little slithers to trim off. There's not much room in it at all the way that I have written the instructions for this block. So if you need that extra little bit of space, give yourself half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch if you're really not comfortable doing this. And that will give you plenty of space to trim this and size it to the size that we need. Now, if you don't know the cutting instructions for this, then you need to get yourself on the mailing list and you will find the link in the description below. And that's going to send you the PDF with all the fabric requirements and cutting instructions for all the blocks. And then it's going to send you the video one information, the written pattern and the video, and then you'll get all the information for this one. So make sure you sign up for that in the mailing list so you can get all the information that you need. Don't forget, I'll be showing you some example quilts made using this lovely block at the end of this video, so stick around to see those. So grab your fabric, grab your sewing machine, and let's get straight to the construction steps. Oh, and I should mention, right before I turned the camera on to sew this, I spilled tea all over my fabric. So I had to do a very quick hand wash of all the cut pieces in the sink and then dry them with an iron. So you might notice a tiny little tea stain on my block as I'm constructing this. But don't worry, I will wash this and it will be absolutely fine. But yes, you know, these things happen. So you're gonna get all the pieces that you need from the pattern. Squares, uh, two squares in background, two squares in color, and then you're gonna need your long strip in background and long strip in color. And all the details are in the PDF for the sizes. So you're gonna start with your squares and you're gonna get your background square and get a pen any pen, it doesn't matter because this line is going to be cut so you're not going to see it so you don't need to worry. I've just used a fine line marker here and I've marked a line corner to corner and we're going to sew a quarter inch on both sides of that line. So you're going to take your fabric and place it right sides together and do the same for your other one. So you've got these ready to go and I suggest pinning these. Place a pin away, well away from where you're going to sew to make your life easy. And then you can also be organized and get prepped for this. So these ones, you just need to line the raw edges up and then pin. So I'm going to be sewing along this edge. So I'm going to put the pin in this way so that when I'm sewing, I can just quickly pull that pin out without having to make too much effort. And then you can pin this all the way along. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. On the half square triangle blocks, I'm going to sew a quarter inch on each side of my drawn line on both of those. And then on the strip unit, I am going to sew a quarter inch to join these together. I chain pieced everything because it's much more efficient. As I mentioned when we did the half square vid triangles video, 
You want to press these before you cut them because that will just help this fabric to relax. You can see it's a little bit puckered. So you don't need to go swirling or anything like that. Just a quick press with your iron down. You can run it along the seam. I'm going to show you two ways. You don't need to use a rotary cutter on a mat because it doesn't matter how accurate you are. So just line up a ruler along your drawn line. If you want to be really accurate, align a quarter inch on your ruler with one of the sewn lines and then just cut it into two pieces like so. But you don't need to be that accurate. You can just get a pair of scissors. So anyway, we'll do. Don't worry about it. It doesn't need to be too accurate because this is going to be your seam allowance. So set your seam first. So dark on top, long seam. Now, I like to get myself a pair of quilting gloves for this. I feel like it just gives me a little bit extra traction for opening the seam. So just one hand. So you're going to roll this back and using the quilting gloves, I'm just going to push that seam up. I would suggest doing this on a slightly bigger surface. I've just got a small square for the purposes of fitting into the camera frame, but I would normally do this on a longer pressing surface. So just press up and use your fingers to get the seam fully opened. Take your iron, press it into the seam and press down. Now you don't want to be doing any of this because that's going to distort this. We're trying to keep this as straight as possible. Press into the seam, you can give a little bit of a tug here if you're struggling to get the seam open and then I'm just going to slide this along pushing up and pushing along that seam and as I say I do sometimes like to just give it a gentle bit of tension here not too much because I don't want to distort anything and then I like to push the iron into the seam just very gently I'm not scraping it along the seam like that I'm just gently pushing it into the seam and then just this last little bit here now you can if you like grab a wee ruler and you can use it to check if your seam is straight and if it's not then you can give it a little bit of a press so mine's just a wee bit off at the end here not worry too much because we are going to square up so when they're joined together with a half inch seam we should have four and a half now if you find that you're maybe just a little bit off with your four and a half like if it's four and three eighths for example then you might just have a little bit of bulk hiding in the seam so you might just want to give it a gentle little tug or use the tips of your coating gloves to just push it open to make sure that there's no fabric hiding in that seam see how we're batching everything same steps at the same time to save time set your seam roll back and push into the seam with your finger and then press with your iron now one thing i like to make sure is that sometimes as you're pushing the iron into the seam it can sometimes not be fully open at the end here so just give it a little check that's not quite open so we just gently put some tension on it with our fingers set with the iron so that's a half square triangle show you a slightly different way to do that if you're not confident doing it with the iron pull up the colored square and with your fingertips push gently along the seam so i'm pushing and kind of pushing like that into the seam and then moving my fingers along just to get it open and then setting with the iron so do whichever one you're most comfortable with and just give it a little check to make sure that it's semi square okay now we're going to square off our half square triangles i'm just going to show you this once there is much more detail about this in the very first video and i'll leave links in the description to the four patch and to the half square triangle video if you're looking for more in depth we want to square these up to four and a half inches square so i have a nice square ruler this is a six inch square ruler you might notice i have a masking tape ledge and it's along the 45 degree line, which runs from corner to corner. This is gonna help me with my seam. We're going to place this, and we're just gonna do a quick check of the size. In the pattern, this comes out at about four and five eighths. If you want more space, just trim these squares down to give you a bit more leeway if you're not comfortable with half square triangles. Just add a half an inch to the size of the starting square and that will give you a bit more fabric to play with but in this method I've only left myself a little bit of fabric because I'm fairly comfortable what we first do is we butt see how that's butting into the half square triangle and it's pushing it so we butt the masking tape line into the seam if you don't have a masking tape line just line up a 45 degree line on your square ruler across the seam make sure that we're past the size that we need so we need four and a half so i'm just kind of on it with the size that i've got so this first one is just to give us a square edge it's not about the size so take off a tiny little bit i mean that's a slither okay so now i know this side is square now i'm going to flip that round 
and I'm going to get my ruler. I'm going to slide it in to the seam. And now this time I'm making sure that the four and a half is lined up correctly because this time we're trimming for size. We're not trimming to get a straight edge. So 45 is lined up all nice or your masking tape ledge thingy name of Bob. Four and a half is here, four and a half is here. And then we're going to trim. Okay, so there's very little coming off this. But as I said, if you don't feel comfortable, then make your original squares about half an inch bigger and that will give you a little bit extra to trim off. You might have noticed as well that actually sometimes I would go this way instead of going that way. And it's just because I have a habit of cutting the square corner off of my ruler, which is not great for the ruler or the blade. Now, just one last quick tip. If when you are trying to get your 45 to line up, you find that, you can see there's just, a, just pretend there's a little bit of a gap there. Okay, so it might mean that something in the middle or something at this end is not quite flat. So we've maybe just pulled it and distorted it. So in that case, what I would do is I would fold it back up. I would set the seam again, and then I would open it up and re-iron it and trying to keep this as straight as I can. So maybe using a ruler just to double check so you can see that it is actually perfectly straight. Okay, so there we have four trimmed half square triangles. Next up is our strip unit. We need to make five four patches so we need to, to cut from the strip 10 segments from the strip good rule of thumb here however wide your starting strips are so in this case two and a half is how wide you cut your segment if these were three and a half you would cut three and a half inch segments if it was five and a half you would cut five and a half inch segments and that means you always get a perfect four square four patch even with our ruler and this is much easier on a bigger cutting mat just getting a bigger cutting mat in with this camera is tricky you're going to line it up with a line on your mat so that you know that you're straight. Depending on your ruler, you might be able to line up more than one line, but with this mat, there's not a line down here. So just find a line and line up the top of the bottom and take your ruler. And we are going to trim just a little bit off the edge of this, just to square it up. So you might find it easier to actually do this the other way. Actually, you will find it easier to do this the other way, he says. I am going to do two things here. I have a line along the top of the strip. I have a line along the middle of the strip so that I know that it's straight. And then I have a line along the bottom. I am just shaving the end off. So don't take too much off because you don't want to get to the end and find that you're like two eighths of an inch short. So now back to this way round. I am right handed, which is why I'm cutting this way. So as I said, two and a half inch strips. So get your ruler, line up some lines. So. Two and a half inch here, line across here straight, line across here straight, and a line across here straight. Once you're happy with everything, chop. And you're just gonna repeat that until you've cut 10 of these out. So that's our 10 pieces, and you can see this is all that we have left from the block. Now we're gonna set ourselves up for success with chain piecing. So get five of these into one pile, three, Four, five, five of these into another pile. Note the blue on the top and the blue on the bottom. That way that I will not make them wrong at the sewing machine. So you're going to place these right sides together and you are going to make sure that those seams nest because that will make sure we get nice, accurate squares. So see how the seams nest? This top one goes that way, this bottom one goes that way and then they just butt together. They lock in place and don't move. Line the edges up. I would suggest in the seam line there, just to hold that in place. Now, when you get to the sewing machine, see how that's kind of a bit wonky because of the pin. When I get to probably here, I pull the pin out. Otherwise, I end up with a bit of a wonky bulk in the middle, okay? Get these all together, right sides together, seams nested and pinned, and take those to the sewing machine and you're gonna join those with a quarter inch seam. And chain piece to save time. Okay, so here are my sewn four patches. We're gonna press these by setting the seam first and then rolling back a little finger into that middle seam, push it apart and then just gently set your seam and give it a wee gentle press. And there's your four patch. Okay, a nice crisp middle. Now it's time to lay the block out. So that's how you lay your block out. I'm going to just take this and we're going to join these two together and then we're going to join these together. We're going to press the top row to the right, the middle row to the left, and the bottom row to the right, and that will help our nice sharp points in these corners. Just line everything up, take them to the sewing machine, and join them with a quarter inch seam. I forgot to say, you can also just double check that these are the right size. They should be four and a half inches square. If they're not quite square, you can just take your ruler and give them a little straight edge, but these are all fine. 
And I'm going to chain piece. I'm going to join these all together. Then I'm going to take these three over and then I'm going to add them on. And I'm going to try and make sure that I've picked that up the right way because I don't want to sew it the wrong way. So here is our sewn pieces. I always like to just quickly open up to double check that it is actually the right way. There's nothing worse than doing all the beautiful pressing and then you're like, oh, that's the wrong way around. So everything is in the right direction. So we're just going to keep those in order. This is the top one, so we're going to press to the left. So the easiest way to do it is flip it over. If you find you've got a little bit of bulk like here, just push the iron onto it and hold it for a second and that will help it to get the flat. Okay, there we are. Et voila. Middle row, we press in the opposite direction. So this might sound strange, but flip it this way, turn it over, and then just press your seams in that direction. And you're maybe thinking, why did you flip it over? I'm confused, but I just find it easier to press that way for some reason. I don't know why I find it harder to press this way. So either way, flip it over, flip it round. So those seams go that way. Whichever way you prefer. Don't worry if that's confusing. That's just the way I do it. Final row, just flip it over. Just how my brain works. I'm slightly odd. Press which most way you feel comfortable, but they are going in the right direction. So there we have it. And then lastly, Pick these up, make sure these seams nest. Beautiful. I would definitely recommend pinning these because we've gone to all this effort of getting everything nice and square. We don't want to just slip it. The last hurdle, there will be a little bit of bulk in the seams where half square triangles are meeting. It's okay, just take your time and slow down when you get to that section with the sewing machine. Okay, so we pinned that. Time saver, we're gonna open this up. And we're going to attach this one at the same time so that we can do all the sewing in a one hour. And when I'm pinning these, I'm just making sure that the seams are nesting. I do adjust this before I start sitting down to the machine. Okay, so let's get this sewn. Okay, so everything's joined. Let me just quickly double check. Yep, all in the right places. Just checking my seams are okay. This one is a little off. Yes, you can see this is a little off. Now, if I was really fussy mood, I would probably unpick that. But you know, I'm not going to because it's not that bad. It's okay. You can see there's a little bit of bulk here because we've got seams meeting seams meeting seams. So you can see it's a bit of a hodgepodge on the back. So we're going to try and press this to get this as flat as possible. So you can see this wants to go this way and this wants to go this way. So that's going to try and get it as flat as we can. This one wants to go this way and this one wants to go this way. So we're going to press the seams of the rows away from the middle. So just the same thing as before we use the iron to push. Just make sure everything's laying nice and flat. I do like to hold my iron and push gently down with pressure on bulky seams just to try and get them to lay nice and flat. Now from the front, we're just going to make sure there's no fabric caught in any of the seams. So we gently pull. A little bit of fabric caught in there. Again here, push. Sometimes bulky seams just take a little bit of extra pressing just to get them flat. You can press the seams open as well. That can also help with bulkage. But just keep flattening it until it will eventually lay flat. You can press down with your iron. You can double check this and square up to 12 and a half inches as required. You can see here I've got a little bit of a lip, so I'll be squaring that up. But that's a fabulous block. So easy. It looks complicated, but it's just four patches and half square triangles. Okay, so that was constructing the quilt. Now, as I mentioned at the end there when I was showing you it, there is a little part that I'm not happy with. This bit here, you can just see that my seams were not nested properly and this is not lining up. Now I said in the thing that I was fine with that, I wasn't really bothered, but the more that I sat and looked on the table, the more that it bugged me. And actually, something else started to bug me as well. This seam here, and I don't know if this is going to come across on camera, but there is quite a lumpy bumpy here. Can I show you that? Yes, yeah, see this here, see this extra fabric. 
Now I thought I maybe just hadn't pressed my seam open enough, but actually it's a problem with the seam bulkage and it's causing an issue. So there is actually going to be like a block 2A video where I'm just going to quickly deconstruct this, explain what's going on, why it's happening and how to fix it. Because uh, that will be important because when, you know, like bulky seams come together, often it can give us problems with pressing to get things flat or to get things fully open. So rather than try to explain it in this video, which is already probably going to be about 15 minutes long, I'm going to do a second quick video just explaining that. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see that and you can figure out how to fix that if that's a problem that affects you. And actually you will find it helpful because it won't just apply to this block. It will apply to many blocks and perhaps help you if you're struggling. A symptom of it can be this block should be 12 and a half inches. This is 12 and 3 eighths of an inch. So there's an eighth of an inch missing and it's stuck in this bulky seam here. So fixing this will get this block to the right size. So if you're having that problem, make sure that you watch the video. And once I've published the video, I'll come back to the description for this video and I'll put a link in it as well. And I'll put a link in the corner or wherever the corner is so that you can watch that and you can just, if you need that little bit of help, it will be there for you. As I mentioned, we are combining skills here. We're stacking our skills from other things that we've learned. So in the description below, you'll find the links to the four patch video and the half square triangle video because you'll notice in the construction methods, I didn't actually show you me sewing anything. I just sewed it off camera and then brought it back to my little workstation. So if you need more instructions, more in depth on making that half square triangle, the first video in the series is where to go because I really went into depth about drawing your lines, sewing it, chain piecing it, uh, trimming it, pressing it, and, and then how to square up. So rather than repeating all that and making you watch it again, just go back and watch that first video and do all of the steps, but just apply it to this block and that will get you all the info that you need. Now let's have a look at some example quotes you can make using this quote block. So here we have the first example quote, and this is a very traditional layout. Now it gives you the illusion that this is different blocks, but actually this is just the Jacob's Ladder and it's just arranged to create these motifs that you can see. So if you were to split this into four quadrants, each quadrant is made up of four blocks and they are arranged so that the nine patches in the ladder go around the central motif. And this is one of these blocks that I love because you make the block, it's a fairly simple block, as we've shown, but then you lay it out and you get this wonderful effect that makes it look like you've worked so much harder than you have actually worked. I think this is amazing. Now, when you look at the border, I have put the same background as the blocks on for the first border and it just makes the design flow. And I love what it does in the corners with this. And then of course, a nice dark border to frame this. So that's the first quote. And I showed you this because as I said, it's a very traditional layout for a Jacob's Ladder quilt. But I love that you just look like you've done so much work when you haven't really done too much work. If you were to put sashing in between each of these quadrants, you could really turn this into something very special. Play with colors, you could do even more with that. Now for our second example, we're getting a bit modern here. So traditional block makes a modern quilt. Now again, this looks really complicated and you might be looking at this thinking, oh, like how did you do that? But it's just Jacob's ladders and they're randomly rotated to until they look like this. And where things come together, it creates these wonderfully sharp shapes. I love how these corners of blocks come together to create this kind of weird 3D looking square diamond that, and I'll zoom in so you can see this bit that I'm talking about. Now, I only did this in two colors. So if you played with the colors in this, you could really do something very special with this one. And I think, I think I want to make this one. I like it so much. It's just, I'm kind of torn between the fact that it feels really busy, but it feels very modern, but it kind of feels, I, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but I can see like several blocks that are made up of this. And so again, this is what another fabulous example of, I've worked so hard to make this quilt when actually it's just one block, but it looks like several blocks blocked together to make something really effective. Now again, using the background color as the first border really helps the design to float and it adds to that feeling of the negative space that runs through this quilt. And, and you can see if I zoom in on this section here, you can see like all the background, it creates this negative space, which makes these, these pieces of the block float essentially. 
So I really like this. And then adding a dark border just frames this very nicely. So I just, oh, another quilt to make. Goodness, by the time we get to the end of the series, my list of quilts is gonna be huge. So anyway, those are the example quilts. And by no means is this the end of what you could do. You could do many more things with this quilt block. But those are just two to whet your appetite. So those are some example quotes that you can do. And again, like I said in the last video with the pinwheel, this is kind of, this is a foundational block that you can build on. And by changing the placement of the colors, you can create secondary and tertiary patterns throughout your quilt, just by adding splashes of color in places. And so it starts to create a visual feast for your eyes. So do get yourself to pre-quilt. And I'll put a link in the description below. You can sign up for free. So you can play with this and you can see just how easy it is to make something really, really quite stunning using one block. I mean, one block. So anyway, that was the very, very tardy Jacob's Ladder block. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you're going to be making this one at home. If you are sewing along, I would love to see what you are doing. So tag me on Instagram at the Colorbrand Quilter and use the hashtag behind the blocks too so that I can follow along with all the blocks that you're making and I can see how they turned out. If you have found this video helpful, you'll consider giving this video a little like because that will help my channel out. And also make sure you have subscribed so that you'll get notified when the little seam fixing video for this comes out and when the next video in the series comes out. And that next video in the series just happens to be the Friendship Star. This is a fun, easy introduction to stars. So if you have never made a star block before, this is a great one to wet your teeth with. Is that the saying, wet your teeth, cut your teeth? I don't know. But it's a great one to get started with either way. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. I'm so sorry this video was as late as it was. I thank you for all of you that stuck with me and are still here. So I will see you in the next video. Have a great one, take care and happy sewing.